What's going on, you guys? I'm Aviana. I'm DJ. Are you joyful? I sure am. I'm about to explode with joy because we only have 14 days until Christmas. If you've been hanging out with us, then you know that joy is finding a way to be happy even when things don't go your way. Eh. What's wrong, DJ? I'm just a little upset about this whole Christmas thing. What do you mean you're upset about this whole Christmas thing? Well, we live in Florida and it never snows, so I get sad. So sad. I may never be able to experience a white Christmas and build snow angels and build snowmans. Okay, that is super sad, I know. I can't make a weather machine, but if we had a snow theme game, would that cheer you up a little bit? Maybe. Well, I have these top hats with bowls in them, and we are going to take turns and we're gonna be throwing cotton balls and you have to try and catch the cotton balls in your super fancy top hat. Okay, that sounds pretty, that sounds pretty fun. Okay, you go first, so let me get you ready. Okay. All right, you're all ready. All right, guys, you guys ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, start! I don't know the strategy. I don't know what to do. Like, move my head. I have none? I think this is more of a you guys game than me. Oh my gosh. I just want, I just want a couple. I just want a couple. Uh, this would be so tragic if I didn't get you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Are we getting close? How long, how much longer do we have? Do we have a timer? No? <laughs> okay, we're gonna start. Whenever the cotton balls run out, that's when we know when to stop. Ready, set, go. <clears throat> There we go. Okay, that's it. Avi, there are more cotton balls on your hat than inside the bowl. What? Let me yep. see. Yep. See, you have like so many right here. Oh, okay. And she literally has, hold on, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this one, so. Well, you still won. That is, that is true. <laughs> do hats, do on the hats count or no? They do? They, they do. So Aviana just won. I won! <laughs> <laughs> that made me feel a little better about not having snow. Thank you for that. Of course. You can have a joy even when things aren't how you want them to be. Let's see what our Bible story says about that. And now, for an amazing true story. From the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. God had a plan to save his people, and he sent a messenger, an angel named Gabriel, to set that plan in motion. Gabriel first appeared to a priest named Zechariah. You and Elizabeth will have a son, he will bring the Israelites back to God and make a path ready for the Lord. Yeah, it was a pretty startling announcement. But Gabriel's next visit was even more unexpected. He appeared to a young girl named Mary who lived in the town of Nazareth. Greetings, the Lord is with you. Who, who are you? Don't be afraid, God is pleased with you. With me? I'm well, nobody really. You're going to give birth to a son. Name him Jesus. He will be great, the son of the Most High God. He will rule over God's people forever. How can this happen? I'm not even married. God will make it happen. Nothing is impossible with God. I serve God. Let it happen just like you've said. Mary was engaged to a young man named Joseph. When he discovered that she was going to have a baby, <laughs> his mind reeled. Now we can't get married. Once again, God sent an angel. This time, he appeared to Joseph in a dream. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. 
Her baby is God's son. Name him Jesus, because he will save God's people from their sins. <sighs> Waking, Joseph stumbled from the bed and rubbed his eyes. God's son. I have to tell Mary. Soon, Joseph and Mary were married. But before Mary was ready to have the baby, a message arrived in town. Oh, listen to this, Mary. It says everyone in the Roman Empire must go to their hometown to be counted. Even women so pregnant they can hardly walk across the room? Well, you know, maybe we can borrow a donkey. <sighs> Mary and Joseph had a long, hard trip back to Joseph's hometown. It may have taken a whole week of travel before they finally arrived in the crowded streets of Bethlehem. Joseph, I think it's here. Well, of course. Bethlehem has been here for centuries. No, the baby. I think it's coming. Right here? Right now. Hmm. Frantic, Joseph began knocking on doors. We need a room. Stat. I fear your luck has run out, laddie. We're full up. Joseph rushed ahead. Please, we've got to have a room right away. My rooms, they are packed solid. A Swiss cheese without the holes, hmm? Desperate, Mary and Joseph hurried to the last place in town. A place to stay, please? You know, we'll, we'll just be happy with a closet. Now, I don't want folks saying I'm all hat and no cattle, but I ain't got no room left. Mary and Joseph turned to leave. What'll we do? Just then, the innkeeper called them back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, howdy there, folks. I'm, I'm getting plum weak north of my ears. You know, I forgot there's a place with my cows, if you want it. By that time, Mary and Joseph were happy to take any space they could find. Whew. Even one that smelled like a zoo. So, Joseph bunched up a bunch of hay like a mattress, and later that evening, a brand new a squalling baby boy was born. Hard to believe this tiny little guy is God's son. Jesus. He's perfect. Mary wrapped her new son tightly in strips of cloth and laid him down to sleep in the cow's feeding trough. Even though Mary and Joseph were weary, they stayed up far into the night watching their new baby. They were filled with unspeakable joy. God had sent down his own son to live with them. Animals everywhere. A feeding trough. This scene wasn't how anyone expected for God's promised one to come. It wasn't a grand entrance fit for a king, but this was how God put his plan to motion. He had good on his promise to his people and sent a savior who would rescue them. And now Jesus was here. Jesus came as a baby in the most unexpected way. He grew up, lived a perfect life and died on the cross to be our savior. And while it's so easy to let Christmas be about the lights, the tree, and the presents, none of that, and none of that really matters without Jesus. Jesus is the real reason we celebrate. So when you wake up your parents early, I mean early on Christmas morning to go look at your gifts, remember that the most important gift isn't sitting there under the tree. It's the gift that God gave us over 2,000 years ago when he sent his son, Jesus. And when you get to hang out with your friends and your family, the best gifts you can give them is to remind them that Jesus was sent here to be our rescuer because he loves us so much. After all, that's where real Christmas joy comes from. And that's the thing to remember this week and always. I can have joy because God sent his son. Can you guys say that with me? I can have joy because God sent his son. One more time. I can have joy because God sent his son. Let's pray. God, it is amazing to think that you sent your son in the most unexpected way. We can have joy because you sent Jesus as a baby in a manger to die on the cross for our sins eventually. We love you, Father, and we have Christmas joy because of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's all we have for you guys this week. Bye.